And the delving into the box of donations continues. Thank you, Sasami-chan. What will it be today? What will it be? What's in the box? What's in the box? Scooby-Doo. And oh. the mystery monster? I'm guessing monster. Yeah. It is a bit covered up, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's monster. Hmm. Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Where are you? We got some work to do now. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> ah, yes, it was like the longest running show in syndication ever. Though personally, I'm a fan of the 13 Ghosts of Scooby Doo because Vincent. Ah, uh, yes. I was okay with Flim Flam, I think his name was. Mm hmm. Scrappy was okay, too. I'm not a fan of what they do with him later. All right, so in case you couldn't tell, <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Specifically, Hanna-Barbera's Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Monster. A Rand McNally book. When I first pulled this out, I thought it was a golden book with a damaged cover, but it is a Rand McNally book. Oh, I see a bunch of stuff on the back, including this book. <laughs> Yes, this book, another Scooby-Doo book. Oh, Wheelie, Devlin, Valley of the Dinosaurs, and good old Hong Kong Fooey. <laughs> wow, that would not fly today. <laughs> For various reasons. All right, I know we normally look at the back at the end, but hey, we can change things up. Once again, in case you skip the intro video, brought to us by Sasami Chan. Or in case I didn't approve the video. Hasn't happened yet, but it is possible. So, Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Monster by Jean Lewis. Illustrated by Ralph Kennedy. Ooh, footprints. They obviously lead somewhere. Obviously. Fred stopped the mystery machine. Here's where the mystery monster was last seen. And heard, said Daphne. Don't forget those roars in the night. Shaggy closed his eyes and put his hands over his ears. I don't want to see it or hear it. That's what we've come for, said Velma, to solve the mystery of the monster. Scooby-Doo was the last of the Mystery Inc. gang out of the car. Look, Velma pointed to a high board fence. What are they building way out here? Private, keep out, read Daphne. That sign makes us about as welcome as the mumps, said Shaggy. Scooby barked. Let's get our campfire started before dark, said Fred. I wonder if Scooby's actually going to talk in this, and will they put that accent of, whoa, whoa. Because apparently all you have to do is put R's in front of everything, and that's like Scooby's accent. Also, the art is very nice, though Fred's face is the only one that looks off in this particular shot. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, Scooby was that big. Sometimes I forget his scale. He's a, gr I believe, Great Dane? I believe so. Yeah, they're big. While the girls unpacked, Fred dug a fire pit and Shaggy and Scooby went to collect wood. Soon Shaggy had an armful of sticks and Scooby a mouthful of twigs until he dropped them. Come on Scooby, said Shaggy. No wood, no fire. No fire, no eats. But Scooby was sniffing the ground. Something more exciting than food, said Shaggy, taking a look. Paw prints, he gasped. Big enough for a monster! Then they heard it. A tremendous roar. It is the monster! Yelped Shaggy as they raced back to the others. And yes, for anyone wondering, I'm not even going to try to do the voices here. <laughs> no. Because Shaggy's is kind of hard on the throat. I, I can't even do it because I don't picture it clearly enough. The gang had heard the roar too. And when Shaggy told them about the giant paw prints... They insisted on going back to look. There hasn't been an animal this big since the Stone Age, exclaimed Velma. Stone Age animal bones were found near here, remember? said Daphne. Daphne's face just does not look right. I think they were meant to indicate she's looking down, but... It looks more like her eyes are closed. Mm -hmm. Bones, sure, said Fred. But a live, walking Stone Age monster? These are fresh prints. Scooby barked. He'd found a second trail of prints as big as the first. I'm trying to remember if there was actually any iteration of Scooby-Doo where Scooby didn't talk. 
Yeah. I do remember him barking in some episodes, but he did a lot more talking. Shaggy, you and Scooby follow this trail, said Fred. We'll stick with the first one. Suppose we find the monster, Will Shaggy. <laughs> uh, Scooby-Doo, such a fun show. Also, they forgot to color in Scooby's nose there. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, they did. But the others were gone. Wait for me, Shaggy called to Scooby, who was ahead, tracking. In his hurry, Shaggy didn't see the edge of an abandoned pit until he fell in. Grabbing a dangling vine, he yelled for help. But by the time Scooby arrived, Shaggy had pulled himself out. Suddenly, Scooby jumped in the pit and began to dig excitedly. Okay. Also, apparently, in addition to having an iteration where Scooby didn't talk, we have an iteration where Scooby wasn't such a scaredy cat. Mm, that or he smelled something in particular. Scooby, get out of there, scolded Shaggy. Then something moved in the underbrush. Yoinks! The monster! gasped Shaggy. But it was Fred and the girls, still following the monster's trail. Hey, Scooby's found a bone! A whopper! said Fred, shining his flash into the pit. Ah. I didn't realize we could abbreviate flashlight to flash. Also, I, I think I know what the person who's probably in a mask of a monster is after. This place is rich with fossils, so they want to make sure no one finds the fossils so they can get all the money for the fossils. By the way, finding fossils is not that... You don't get a lot of money for it. But if you're an archaeologist, you do get some money... But it's mostly to help fund your dicks. Also, no, we have people wanting to make sure that the bones don't get found so they can build whatever they're going to build. Oh, oh, yeah, because the building sign, gotcha. Don't chew it, Scooby, said Velma. It may be a Stone Age bone, millions of years old. Maybe he'll swap it for this candy bar, said Shaggy, waving it at Scooby. That brought him up on the double. Scooby got the candy, and Velma got the bone. I, I see what's supposed to be the monster. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll take it to the Natural History Museum, she said, wrapping it carefully in her sweater. Great, said Shaggy. Let's go right now. But what about the monster, said Daphne. Fred switched on his flash. Before it gets too dark, let's see where these prints lead. I really like that image. I mean, look, look, just look how action-y it is. Mm -hmm. Red's, he looks very action hero-like. He looks like he's ready for action. It's a very dynamic pose. Mm -hmm. They led straight to the high board fence. I say we go in, said Fred. And I say not me, said Shaggy. Then came a tremendous roar from behind the fence as a huge head towered over the top. Mm. And since we don't post all the pictures, it's a mammoth. A woolly mammoth, specifically. Quick, gang, into the car, shouted Fred as part of the fence started to give way. Scooby was first under the back seat. Shaggy was next. The fence crashed down, showing an elephant-like monster, only much bigger. Wait a minute. An elephant-like monster, an elephant-like monster, except much bigger? I don't remember woolly mammoths being that much bigger than what we currently have. Yes, but it was an elephant-like monster, only much bigger. So it's bigger than an elephant-like monster. Uh, I see what you did there. Also, that image is also very dynamic. I like it. Though Scooby looks a little silly there. With the tongue sticking out and the paws going every which way. Though, if you think about it, Shaggy also looks a little silly, but those two were basically the com comedy part of the show. Look, said Fred, as a man came from behind the monster to check the smashed fence. He saw them and came over to the car. I'm Ed Green. Sorry if my Stone Age toy gave you a scare. I had it out on a trial run. He pressed a remote control switch. The monster moved. He pressed it again, and it stopped. It's so real, gasped Daphne. He's one of the electronic animals I'm designing for Stone Age Park, said Mr. Green. Is that what's being built here? asked Fred. Mr. Green nodded. We picked this area because prehistoric animals like this mammoth lived here once. When Stone Age Park opens, you'll see how it was millions of years ago. Ah, so it's actually a good guy this time? Depends on what ticket prices are. Yeah! 
On opening day, Mr. Green gave the Mystery Ink Gang a special tour of Stone Age Park. We've got a surprise for Scooby, he said. Remember that bone he dug up? The museum people found the prehistoric animal skeleton it belonged to, said Velma. The specific skeleton, or did they just identify the animal? I don't know. They're like, oh, yeah, we had almost a complete skeleton. This is what we were missing. missing. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of different prehistoric animals there. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Like, I think this is actually the ancestors to giraffes, but they also have something that looks like a giraffe right behind them, except it doesn't have the usual spots and stuff like that. And a saber-toothed tiger, the woolly mammoths. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's either some early form of wild boar or one of the early um, members of the rodentia family. There are actually rodents that are large enough to mm. like feed a family. And in honor of the discoverer, it's to be called Similodon Scubus Dubus, said Mr. Green. Here's the model I made for Stone Age Park. Mr. Green pressed a switch and out stalked a fierce looking tiger like creature. But Scooby didn't run. He looked awfully proud of his very own monster. Okay, that bone did not fit in that creature. Not, no way, not no how. Mammoth, yes. Tiger, no. That's what I was thinking when I saw that large bone. I was thinking like some animal like a mammoth. I mean, like, they cut right to it, basically, after they show the bone. Because that is a very large bone. The, the bone's like... Almost as long as Scooby. Mm hmm And it's very clearly not part of a spinal cord, so it can't be going down the back. This has to be like a leg bone. It's, it's, like a femur or a humerus. Yeah, it's one of those. And then they show this cat that's not too much larger than Scooby. So, yeah, I don't know where that bone would fit anywhere on that. I guess they wanted to do a cat because they wanted one, show a shape tooth tiger, and two cats and dogs. Very nice book, though. Yeah. Captured the spirit of the show quite nicely, except no villain. Yeah, there's actually no villain, and there's no mask to rip off of anyone. And no one going, if it wasn't for you darn kids and that dog. So, missing a couple hallmarks, but very much in the spirit of the show. I always like that there, there was this, I think it was one of the modern iterations of Scooby-Doo. If it wasn't for you kids and that dog. And Scooby goes, dog? Where? <laughs> All right. So this has been Hanna-Barbera's Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Monster, a Rand McNally book by Jean Lewis, illustrated by Ralph Kennedy. Hmm. That name seems familiar. You can Google it later. Also, no copyright date, but we have an established date for Rand McNally and Company. 1856. Hmm. So the real question is, is something from Rand McNally and Hanna-Barbera still in print? Probably not. We'll see about getting you a used link. Because, hey, it's Scooby-Doo. Yeah, and who knows, it may have a reprint. Because Hanna-Barbera, I think, is still around. I know Scooby-Doo is definitely still around. I just don't know if Hanna-Barbera is owned by a different company now. Who knows where the rights actually belong in the U.S. at this point. And Ebates... You know, because I can. I mean, you guys like money, right? Most people, even if they're not greedy, still at least don't hate money. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. And yeah, a lot of times we point you back to our playlist, but we don't have a Hanna-Barbera or Scooby-Doo playlist yet. We may need to start a new playlist for all books that have TV tie-ins. Hmm. Yeah, that would be a good one. That would include the Shira books. Mm-hmm. And Rainbow Bright. Yep. Though this one will also be on the Donated Books playlist. Thank you, Sasami-chan. And thanks again for listening. <laughs>